Hey, it's Olvet Haya back again with another video about everything beauty and skincare. And this week I wanted to talk about the things you need to know when buying a moisturizer. A moisturizer is a very important step in your skincare routine. I really hope that these five tips will help you save time and money. Tip number one is to avoid buying moisturizers that are packaged in jars. Not only is it not very hygienic to keep reaching into your moisturizer with your fingers again and again contaminating the product, there are also ingredients that are in your moisturizers that become less and less effective the more that it is exposed to sunlight and oxygen. By buying these moisturizers that are packaged in jars and are continuously exposed to air, you're effectively wasting your money and not getting the full benefit of the product that you paid for. As an alternative, you can try buying moisturizers that are packaged in tubes or maybe bottles that come with a pump. That way you can make sure that your moisturizer will never be exposed to air or sunlight and they will remain effective as long as you have them. Tip number two is that sunscreen is an absolute must. I'm sure we've all heard this before and to be honest with you, when I heard this in the past, I kind of used to roll my eyes because it's been said over and over again and I didn't fully understand the importance of sun protection. But the more I read about it, the more I find out how important a sun protection factor is in your cosmetics. It's been proven time and time again that SPF and sun protection is the best way to prevent aging and reduce those signs of aging such as wrinkles and fine lines. Since a moisturizer is one of those ingredients that will remain on your face for the duration of the entire day, it is really important that your moisturizer comes with a sun protection factor. I recommend SPF of at least 30. Now this could be a little tricky for some people with oily skin types just because a lot of creams that have higher SPF tend to be a little more emollient and some people say even greasy. For this, I recommend just experimenting with different kinds of moisturizers. Regardless of the product that you go with, make sure that your moisturizer has a sun protection factor of at least 15 and that you apply it every morning and keep it on for the duration of the day. If you wash your face, be sure to reapply your moisturizer to make sure that your skin is protected from the sun. Tip number three, of course, is to look at the ingredients. These are the things that make up your product and it's probably the most important thing to look for when buying a moisturizer. First few ingredients, probably about five or six, are gonna be the major ingredients that are used to make up your moisturizer. That means that these ingredients are used in large amount. Ingredients towards the end of the list are used more sparingly and not in such large amounts. Now, these are the five ingredients that you should look for and try to include in your moisturizer as much as possible. Most of these ingredients will serve to hydrate your skin as well as keep in that moisture so that your skin is not dry and protected from the environment. Ingredient number one is hyaluronic acid. Now this is an ingredient that is actually found in our skin naturally. It's also often used as lip filler so it has a very good plumping property to it. So when hyaluronic acid is used in moisturizers, it helps your skin retain that moisture as well as plump the skin to make it look more full and healthy. The second ingredient that you want to look for in your moisturizer is glycerin. Glycerin is also naturally found in your skin and it's a really great substance that will help protect your skin barrier and prevent your skin from drying out and from excessive dryness. Another great ingredient to look for in a moisturizer is dimethicone. Dimethicone is used as an emollient in a lot of the products and it's really great in helping protect your skin by forming a barrier around it which locks in all the moisture. Another really great ingredient to look for is petrolatum. Petrolatum is basically petroleum jelly, also known as Vaseline. Now the internet has been full of talk about how petroleum jelly is harmful for your skin because it is a byproduct of petroleum. However, it is entirely purified and 100% safe to use in all cosmetic products. It is really great in repairing any damage, it reduces inflammation, and it is generally a great ingredient that forms a nice barrier around your skin that protects it from all the outside factors and keeps the moisture very sealed in. Because petrolatum is so emollient, a lot of people are cautious about it and afraid that it will get into your pores and clog your pores, creating more acne. 
That is not true. Petrolatum actually does not get into your pores. It merely sits on top of your skin, creating a barrier and protecting it from the environment. One thing to keep in mind for those with more oily skin types is that moisturizers that do have petrolatum in them are more likely to be more rich, emollient, and if you have oily skin types, you probably don't need that extra moisture. In your case, it is okay to skip over this ingredient and move on to the next one. The fifth ingredient that you should absolutely look for in all moisturizers is ceramides. Now, ceramides is another substance that is naturally found in our skin, and it's basically skin fats. Ceramides make up the outer layers of our skin, and the reason this ingredient is so great is because it helps your skin repair the skin's barrier, as well as retain a lot of the moisture. Now, of course, there are ingredients that you want to try to avoid as much as possible, especially in your moisturizer. Ingredient number one, and you probably have already heard this, is alcohol. Remember that not all ingredients that have the word alcohol in them are bad. The two main types to avoid are isopropyl alcohol as well as denatured alcohol. The second ingredient to avoid in most all of your skin care products is fragrances. Fragrances are highly irritable to your skin and they really serve no other purpose but to create scent. For this reason, I would steer clear of any products that contain any kind of fragrances. The last ingredient that you want to watch out for and try to avoid as much as possible is certain oils. Now, not all oils are bad, but you definitely want to steer clear of all essential oils. Essential oils have really high fragrance to them, which could be very irritable to your skin. The main ones to try to avoid is peppermint, eucalyptus, as well as lavender and most citrus oils. Tip number four is to consider a nighttime cream alternative. Now this is definitely not required and you most likely can get away with using just one moisturizer for your daytime and nighttime use, but you might want to consider a nighttime cream for these two reasons. The first reason is if you want to incorporate the use of retinol in your skincare routine. Retinol is a derivative of vitamin A and it basically tells your skin cells how to behave and ultimately how to repair and appear and behave like healthy skin cells. Retinol has been scientifically proven to reduce signs of aging such as fine lines and wrinkles as well as increase your collagen production. The reason that you might want to use retinol as part of your nighttime cream is that it is more effective when used at night just because it can degrade when exposed to sunlight. Another reason that you might want to have a different cream for nighttime is if you want a cream without any sun protection factor. Because those sunscreen ingredients tend to make moisturizers more rich, creamy, and emollient, a lot of people opt for creams without any SPF for night since you obviously don't need any sun protection when you're sleeping. Like I said, you can definitely get away with using just one cream for both your daytime use and at night, but if you do want to go that extra step, consider an alternative cream for nighttime. You've all probably seen the following claims on most cosmetic products. Claims like hypoallergenic, not comatogenic, all natural, organic. My fifth tip is to pretty much ignore these claims. The reason I say this is because these claims are generally not tested or regulated in the beauty industry and oftentimes they can be very misleading. When it comes to the all natural or organic claims, there are a lot of natural products that could potentially be very harmful to your skin. Likewise, there are some synthetic ingredients that might be very beneficial and helpful in repairing your skin. For this reason, those claims are very misleading. Similarly, when it comes to products that claim that they're non comedogenic is another misleading product because a lot of ingredients potentially could cause acne if used in really large quantities. However, when used in the right amount, in the right formulation, in conjunction with other ingredients, they are very very beneficial to your skin. For these reasons, these claims that are often plastered all over your products are very misleading and are probably nothing more than just a marketing ploy. These are the five tips to smarter shopping when buying a moisturizer. I really hope they were helpful and that you enjoyed this video. Please come back next time for more videos on everything skincare and beauty 
and be sure to click the subscribe button to subscribe to Haya on YouTube and be notified anytime there's a new video.